So I'm Rosemary Becker and it's been a while since I have YouTubed um, or you know uploaded a new video and I briefly wanted to talk about uh, my fitness journey. Um, I'm going to probably share some old pictures of myself and I don't actually mind sharing those old pictures. I uh, like to bring them out on occasion and, and share with you know sort of friends that I have now that um, didn't know me back then and um, just you know look on their faces because they can't believe that that was actually me um, because it really doesn't look like me at all in some ways and uh, and it's been a long journey. I was in good shape growing up. Uh, my mom really made sure that you know we were eating pretty light. She was always on a diet of some kind um, and you know kind of introduced us to the gym really early. I remember going to the gym with her when I was probably like three or four. Um, she was doing you know sort of machines and trying to work out and stuff like that and I would go there and do sort of like swimming lessons and, and things but I was aware that she did work out at that point when I was really young, you know, and so I was kind of active um, a little bit in sports during high school. Not a ton, but enough, you know, field hockey and things like that, um, which I always hated running. But anyway, I digress. Got married when I was 20, and uh, it was probably like a couple years into our marriage that um, we found out that we couldn't um, have children at that point and it was kind of devastating um ivf was really brand new this is like 1992 and ivf was really brand new and it was really expensive and we're you know 21 22 years old and it was just out of our price range um completely and so um tried different methods anyway and you know sort of nothing worked and stuff and then went into our 30s and then started doing ivf we did a couple IVF cycles and and that didn't work out either. Um, and so that would uh, put me sort of in a depressive mood and it was a very painful time period. Um, I was actively going to church at the time and you know didn't un quite understand why this was happening and felt less than um, because at that age, you know, all of our friends were married at the time and they're all having children and, you know, my sister's having kids, my brother's having multiple children. Um, and, you know, and, and I'm the only one that's, you know, not able to produce. And I had always identified myself as being a mother. So this was super devastating. And... So I started putting on weight because I just really didn't care. I didn't, I ate to comfort myself. I ate because I was bored. And then I'd reach a point and then I couldn't stand it anymore. And then I'd lose all the weight and tried a ton of different methods to lose weight. And, and all of them work. You know what? A diet is a diet. Whether you're doing vegan or whether you're doing, you know, sort of um, Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or... Um, you know, just counting calories, you know, you're creating a deficit. Ultimately, I was always creating a deficit. I would start working out. I got personal trainers at the gym and, you know, uh, definitely, you know, put the time in, lost the weight, and then life would start over again and, and I'd get depressed and, um, and start eating my feelings, basically. So that was kind of like where I started and what the cycle was. So there was a lot of yo-yo dieting this entire time. Whenever I dieted and whenever I started losing weight, I started feeling better about myself and then um, everything was great and then I'd go back to my old eating habits that I had before. So somewhere around, I think I was like 38, I read a book, it was a diet book, I know that. It was a diet book talking about, you know, what we, trying to identify what we deserve. Um, and, you know, making sure that you were in an environment or that your home was in an environment that was positive, that, you know, you were taking care of yourself and making sure that, you know, sort of all the junk food was out of the house and, you know, and things like that. But, you know, which I would do, like, because I think every diet book out there says that, you know, make sure you, you know, you're 
set up for success basically. But the thing about that book was that it also talked about the emotional part of it, which none of the other books really did or none of the other programs really did talk about, you know, how do you be, how do you take care of the emotional part? And um, in the meantime, my ex was going through um, drug addiction and rehab and that was putting extra strain on our marriage and extra strain on myself. Um, I hadn't grown up in an alcoholic home. Um, I just was unhappy the whole entire time. And I still remember there was this one time I was on a bus and heading to work and the sign oddly enough at a church was, um, you know, what do I want? And I couldn't answer that question. And it goes back to the same thing, you know, what do I deserve? I wouldn't be, I, at that point I couldn't answer that question and it drove me crazy. I thought about it for weeks and obviously almost 10 years later, it still stuck with me. What do you deserve? You know, what do you want? which ultimately it's like all I could answer is I wanted to be happy, but I didn't know what that looked like. I just knew I wasn't in a place where I needed to be anymore. After reading that book, um, I decided to make some small changes here and there. Went to counseling, um, started out with marriage counseling, and then that rolled into individual counseling for myself. Worked on some of those areas that I needed to work on to figure out, you know, how do I, how do I get to that place where I deserve things? How do I make sure because the infertility part um, made me feel like, you know, I didn't deserve having children. Maybe I don't deserve anything, which is a weird thing to think about, but that's where I was. And the reason I'm making this video is because I know there's probably others out there that think, that may not even know, they may not even know that question, right? But something in your past, trauma, childhood abuse, something, something probably makes you believe that as well that maybe you don't deserve things you don't deserve and that's frankly bullshit but those are your feelings and those were my feelings and i'm grateful for the counseling that i got um helped me to you know sort of take control of my inner being which translated to me being able to take care of myself um and my emotional eating which is pretty much gone now i don't emotionally eat i don't deprive myself when i'm not feeling well i don't overeat when I'm not feeling well, um, which was really great. That's a lot of years of training myself to do so and, you know, being able to say that today is, is really great. <sighs> that was really hard. So I encourage you, if you feel that way or if you think you might feel that way, to talk to someone, um, reach out, get some counseling if you need to. There's nothing wrong with that. It just gives you a different perspective or helps you to identify where those things that are lurking in your past um, are about and being able to deal with them in a positive manner so that you're treating yourself correctly. Um, nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with me. And um, so I hope this is beneficial for someone out there and that, um, you know, you do feel at the end that, you know, you do deserve, you do deserve more. You do deserve to treat yourself well and to be happy and to um, take care of your body, take care of your soul. Anyway, have a good day.